This is a presentation of Taxiway Design Section 2, Airplane Maneuvering, by the Federal Aviation Administration. This section discusses how airplanes maneuver along taxiways, and how airplane maneuverability affects the design of a taxiway system. Taxiways must be wide enough to keep an airplane's landing gear safely on load-bearing pavement as the pilot maneuvers along the taxiway. Even experienced pilots can stray and steer a plane slightly off the center line. Taxiways must accommodate a certain amount of lack of precision in following the taxiway center line. FAA standards for pavement width on straight taxiway sections were previously related to airplane wingspan. The new standards continue to include the common taxiway widths, but more appropriately relate them to the maximum overall width of the main landing gear of the family of airplanes expected to use the taxiway. As shown on this airplane illustration, the airplane's main gear width, or MGW, is the distance from the outer edge of the leftmost tire to the outer edge of the rightmost tire of the main gear. To allow for some wander from the center line, the FAA calculates the maximum MGW by subtracting twice the taxiway edge safety margin, or TESM, from the straight section taxiway width. An airplane's main gear track in on a turn. In this section, we'll discuss how FAA standards consider this in the design of standard taxiway turns. If we were to ignore the special maneuvering characteristics of large airplanes, a taxiway curve would look like this a simple curve with a constant pavement width along the straightaway and the curve, and with the painted center line equidistant from both edges. At the arc, notice how the radii of the three lines, the outer edge, center line, and inner edge, have a common center. Knowing that the main gear follow a path closer to the inside of the curve means that we can safely move the center line toward the outside of the curve while maintaining the TESM, as shown here. This close-up of the curve shows the same centerline radius we saw in our previous example. This alteration, however, is not enough to maintain the TESM on the inside of the curve. To maintain the TESM, the curve design must include fillets, highlighted here in blue. The extent of the fillets required for a turn is dependent upon how the pilot maneuvers the airplane around the turn. In the past, FAA standards allowed engineers to design taxiway turns based on judgmental oversteering to save on paving costs. Judgmental oversteering requires a pilot to use visual cues other than the painted taxiway center line to negotiate a turn, as shown here in this animation of an airplane maneuvering through a right angle turn. Note how the pilot does not steer the cockpit along the center line. Instead, to keep the main gear on the pavement, the pilot maintains a straight line past the curve and pivots into the turn at some point beyond the point of the painted center line's curvature. The blue lines indicate the required TESM as the airplane proceeds through the turn. Because the pilot does not have precise guidance, the fillets shown here are an example showing how an airport might build to provide a larger margin for steering errors. This approach reduces savings in paving costs. Taxiways are designed for airplanes that use them regularly, just as residential streets are designed for passenger cars instead of large semi-trucks. The driver of a large semi-truck must use judgmental oversteering to negotiate turns at intersections of narrow residential streets. Larger airplanes will always use this technique on taxiways at airports where they only operate occasionally. To promote safety, avoid pavement excursions, and promote efficiency through standardization, the FAA eliminated judgmental oversteering as a design technique in favor of the cockpit over centerline technique. The cockpit over centerline technique must enable the pilot to negotiate the turn with confidence that the airplane's landing gear will remain safely on the pavement. However, the previous standards based on airplane design group were not adequate. This animation of an Airbus A340-600 series completing the same turn using cockpit over centerline steering 
demonstrates why the previous standards based on Airplane Design Group were not adequate. As you can see, the pilot cannot maintain the required TESM. In more severe turns, the main landing gear of this airplane will leave the pavement. Using the new taxiway design standards, the fillets are right-sized. This design maintains the TESM while avoiding construction of more pavement than necessary. In this animation, note that as the pilot steers with the cockpit along the center line, the main landing gear follow a predictable path, remaining safely on the pavement with the new, right-sized fillets. Previous FAA standards for taxiway design were based only on Airplane Design Group, as determined by an airplane's wingspan, shown here in our airplane illustration. Except for the fact that wider airplanes are also generally longer, wingspan has no relation to the amount of pavement needed to maneuver an airplane on the ground. The factors that determine the pavement needed for a turn are the MGW, the TESM, and the distance between the centroid of the main gear and the point of the airplane that follows the painted centerline, as shown by this dimension along the length of the plane. As we have noted, the FAA standard is cockpit over centerline, so this additional dimension is the cockpit to main gear distance, or CMG. Now we'll look at how the FAA determined the extent of the fillets using the airplane with the longest CMG and widest MGW expected to use the taxiway. This example shows an airplane negotiating a 90 degree turn. The curved yellow line shows the cockpit track and the green shows the MGW track. This airplane has the longest CMG and widest MGW for which the taxiway is designed. The CMG allows us to calculate the minimum centerline radius needed to keep the nose gear steering angle within acceptable limits and along with the MGW and TESM, shown here in red, we can also calculate the extent of fillets needed for a turn through a specified angle, also known as a delta. The longer the CMG and the greater the delta, the more the main gear track into the curve. Look again at the yellow centerline track followed by the cockpit. When we overlay the green main landing gear lines, Notice the path taken by the main landing gear as the airplane steers through the curve. The path of the main gear moves inside the center line as the airplane steers through the curve. These red lines show the TESM, drawn outside each of the green main gear lines. Airplanes travel in both directions, so now we can superimpose the path of the TESM of an airplane maneuvering in the opposite direction along the same 90 degree turn. Note that the two TESM paths intersect at a point halfway through the turn. The result is the extent of pavement needed for fillets, as shown in this example, where the black line segments approximate the path of the inner TESM. This method of using straight pavement edges instead of curved pavement edges considers ease of construction. Now we will look at the outer edge of pavements in standard curves. In determining the minimum radius of the outer edge of the pavement in standard curves, the FAA used all critical combinations of short CMG and wide MGW. We can overlay red lines to show the cockpit over centerline steer paths in both directions of the outer landing gear plus the TESM of airplanes with critical CMG and MGW combinations. Using these combinations, we can draw the outer edge of the curve. The black curved line added here is drawn at the outer limits of these critical CMG and MGW combinations. Calculating wheel paths can be quite complicated, so the FAA has provided all the necessary calculations for turns of preferred deltas, specifically 30, 45, 60, 90, 135, 150, and the special situation of a 180 degree turn between parallel taxiways. FAA design tools and other specialized software are available to design other angle turns. These subjects are covered in detail in other sections of this guidance. The track-in of the main gear also affects two standards that are based on the wingspan of the airplane, the Taxiway Safety Area, or TSA, and the Taxiway Object Free Area, or TOFA. 
The TSA provides a prepared surface free of fixed objects, except those fixed by function, that will support an airplane in the event of an excursion from the taxiway pavement. The TOFA protects the wingtips from collisions with objects. Let's look at a few more dimensions. Using the plan view of an airplane with the maximum wingspan for the airplane design group for straight sections, the width of the TSA is equal to the maximum wingspan in the airplane design group. Using the TSA, the distance from the pavement edge to the limit of the TSA is then half of the wingspan minus half of the taxiway width. Now considering the required wingtip clearance off each side of the plane, we can see the TOFA, which is equal to the wingspan plus the required wingtip clearance on both sides. To calculate the TOFA limit around a curve, let's start with our simple plan view of a 90 degree taxiway curve as shown here. The yellow center line follows a relatively tight arc, while the distance between the outside pavement edge and the center line changes throughout the curve. The black inner line segment shows the edge of the taxiway fillet. As we mentioned earlier, the main gear of a large airplane does not follow the cockpit in a turn, but tracks in toward the inside of the turn. The wingtip will follow a similar path and must be protected from collision with objects. To do this, we adjust the TSA on the inside of the curve so that the distance between the pavement edges and the TSA limits are the same as on straight sections. The blue lines shown here, parallel to the outside and inside pavement edges, curved on the outside and segmented on the inside, show the distance from the pavement edges to the limit of the TSA. The limits of the TOFA are also parallel to the edges of the fillets, as represented here with red lines drawn at the TOFA limit outside each edge. This has been a presentation of Taxiway Design Section 2, Airplane Maneuvering, by the Federal Aviation Administration. Produced by Joint Venture Solutions.